Welcome guys to another episode of Boom Arena. Today we're gonna be playing with a Splemetry, which is one of the most versatile like decks of all time that you can use and that's why I'm gonna be using this today because uh, well f first of all it's the deck that uh, it is very good uh, to practice because you pretty much will be uh, able to play it in any meta that you pretty much want and second of all okay he's getting me like giving me the infinite value for this poison I obviously will take it and second of all uh, it kind of can uh, teach you uh, some very important principles of the uh, game as a whole for instance how to uh, defend efficiently so you can still attack how can you play cards that are sometimes expensive than your opponent's uh, attackers so you can just counter push with them etc etc i would say like splemetry is very good deck for beginners to learn uh, pretty much the basics of the game as a whole i'm gonna sacrifice some of this there's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna then proceed to play a cemetery and I'm gonna play a poison here to delete this uh, to delete this mana pump. And uh, at the same time, I'm gonna also clip the devil horse. That's gonna be a pretty damn good value for me. Uh, obviously, we're gonna be playing against just for funsies. He has 900 mils and is pretty darn good player, but he's gonna be playing. Uh, to say the least, an interesting deck. I would love to say that he's playing three gunners, and there it is. Okay, so he's gonna be playing three gunners. I'm gonna play a bomber uh, for now on the lane with a one gunner, and I'm gonna play a swordsman on the other lane so I can uh, basically uh, take care of the uh, other gunners. I'm gonna play uh, right now, Skeleton Shark. Here, I'm gonna use Cyclone to counter uh, this one. I'm gonna. Okay, he's. He's actually going uh, for the damage with this gunner. I think that wasn't the worst move he could have done. Uh, as for now, we have a counter push, but we cannot go in because if he were to play a three gunners on our uh, counter push, it would have been very bad, and that's why he pretty much can just clean up with a explore. Very good uh, defensive resource out of him. Right now, we're gonna just play poison on his two gunners. That's pretty much the easiest way that you play against three gunners. You just get. Uh, poison on two gunners every single time you play them. I'm gonna play T-Rex here. I don't know, that just for a good measure. I'm gonna play a Footman Keg here. He's gonna cycle a Devil Horde in the back, which is very concerning move. I'm gonna play right now uh, my Bomber. No reason not to. And I'm gonna cycle to a T-Rex because it's uh, the best response against a Devil Horde in the game. Eh. Maybe with some exceptions, but it's very solid. You, you have to give that one. Okay, so he's gonna be playing actually uh, some uh, interesting pumps. And that's why we'll have to be a bit careful. I'm gonna obviously get a very clean uh, counter against that. I would love this mm, swordsman to go for a... For the folks, for the phones. He didn't, so I had to use Cyclone because otherwise I would actually suffer a lot of damage. I'm gonna right now play a T-Rex on this Devil Horde. That's gonna be absolutely perfect. I'm gonna even let this Digger connect because at the end of the day I have the damage lead and basically at any point of the game I can decide to play the Cemetery. I can play some Poison, maybe even playing Poison first would have been a better call, but it doesn't really matter. GG well played, we start very strongly against pretty much 100-0 uh, for us. That was a very good matchup, however, if you kinda don't know that your opponent has 3 gunners, it can be very tricky at the beginning. Either way, uh, very fun game, GG, and let's jump to the game number 2. And right now we are in the game number 2 against Lost Control, who has 600 melos, who will be playing against us while we are gonna be playing a Splemetry still. Nothing changed. He's gonna start with a Fawn Horde, so first thing I anticipate is a Steel Bait, obviously the very meta pick, but now he plays Blitz, so it obviously may be something different. I'm gonna play T-Rex just, just to cycle and pretty much see what uh, will he play uh, as an X card. He's gonna be playing Mother Devil, so right now I kinda expect some B down, maybe with Brute, maybe with Flying Robot, we're gonna see. He's actually playing a Brute, so yeah. At least on that I was correct. I'm gonna just play Footman Keg here. 
to create some pressure, cycle to another skeleton hut and he's going playing devils, so okay. I think at this point the game plan is very simple, he's gonna be very spammy with uh, devils and these sorts of things, so the key card for my defenses will be the uh, T-Rex, so he's gonna be also playing cemetery, which uh, obviously uh, will complicate my defenses a bit, but I hope not too much, so he's gonna be also playing piercing archer, which is an excellent tool right now to clean up pretty much everything I have for him coming down the lane, and I honestly don't want to play a poison against it, so I'm gonna just cycle skeleton hat. Hope for some kind of slow playing this position. There's no reason to rush. I'm gonna play Bomber here, and unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, this piercing archer will lock onto the skeleton hut. Eh. Sometimes it happens. Pretty much nothing I could have done for that. I'm gonna right now play a swordsman against this brute. Hope that I'm gonna get some value against uh, his troops, and I will. This cycle will be absolutely brutal for him, as right now I'm gonna just absolutely clean up everything he owns. And after that I think, okay, if I were to have cycle I would definitely play it aggressively, but uh, I didn't, so I'm gonna just uh, let it go pretty much. What a waste. I'm gonna play T-Rex right here, stack uh, some troops at the bridge, nothing bad about that yet. He's gonna actually go very aggressively with a Brute and Fawn Horde here. I don't think it's gonna pay out, pay off for him. Actually, my T-Rex locks on the Devils, which will be very crucial because right now, okay. He had bullets to clean everything up, but if he were not to have them, it would have been a very bad attack for him to handle. And I think we're in a very good spot. Also, one thing to note is that he's not playing any uh, big spell. So that's gonna be very cool for us, he at least didn't show that yet, and if he doesn't show the big spell, it's gonna pretty much mean that we have a free game on our hands. I'm gonna play right now a Cyclone to absolutely obliterate everything inside, and that push will probably just break through, yeah. He doesn't have tools to defend that, and that's gonna be GG against Lost Control, very very good game, I would say if he were to have poisoned this game would have been definitely interesting, but without that, we absolutely take the free win and go to the game number 3. And we're back against Bomba Clot, who starts with the <coughs> starts with a Bob Girl. Nothing too shabby so far. We're gonna play a Cyclone on this phone cake. That's a very cool timing and placement to just get a full counter on the uh, phone cake, it's pretty useful to uh, learn if you want to get competitive because obviously every advantage counts and especially against decks like Steel Bait, it's pretty huge advantage I would say to get your Viking Tower activated. I'm gonna play Bomber here to absolutely eradicate the incoming push. I'm gonna play also a T-Rex. He actually sets up against me going uh, for this telemetry, but uh, I mean for this telemetry, telemetry is the name of the deck. Uh, whatever, I think we're just chilling right now. This T-Rex shouldn't be able to deal any damage, at least I don't expect it to do anything. I'm gonna set up just Skeleton Hut, slow play it, there's no reason to rush, I'm gonna play Footman Keg and that's gonna be pretty much the opening. So. We know exactly what variation he's playing, with the exception of the spell, and that's the thing we have to kinda get to know what is he playing, because if he's playing poison, he's gonna be having a very decent matchup against us, but if he's playing missile, we're gonna go instantly and pretty much win the game, because I don't think he has anything to stop that uh, splamatory push. I'm gonna play Cyclone here to delete his phones, and yet these skeletons will just shred through his tower, and yeah, that's the poison range, even if he had like 1000 HP left or something like that, I would be feeling very comfortable, but with that type of advantage, it's definitely unlosable uh, for me at this point. So, we're gonna just play a poison on this bomb girl, since we are in an unlosable position, the worst thing we can do is give him kind of hope that he can come back into this game by like still playing asymmetrically. And another thing that you kinda want to keep in mind that 
uh, if you want to play boom arena well you have to know when you want to uh, try to uh, complicate the position and when you try to simplify the position so good f good uh, things that simplify the position are uh, spells and buildings because they pretty much uh, give the most value uh, that you play them and they don't counter push but troops on the other hand are the uh, complicators of the position so if you want to create uh, an advantage for yourself and uh, make the game more complicated you kind of want to play troops because they kind of allow you to sometimes defend and then counter push and that's pretty much the Perfect uh, case scenario that you want to play like a Splemetry. You want to play every card on defense, get the most value out of it, and then make it counter push and support with Symmetry. So yeah, that's gonna be the game number three against Steelbait. Let's jump to the game number four, shall we? And we're in the game number four against a guy whose name is Two Emotes, which I absolutely cannot uh, identify. For the simplest of reasons, uh, the font doesn't support uh, emotes. I'm gonna play a cyclone to fully counter a bomberman. Also, a very fun interaction to learn. Oh, actually, I would say uh, you genuinely have to learn this deck if you want to become a, even a remotely good player because it just, uh, like I've said in the intro, so versatile, so good in so many scenarios and if you master Splemetry, you pretty much are free to master all decks because uh, if you uh, if you know how to play Splemetry, you pretty much uh, will know how to play other decks uh, uh, by default. Okay, I'm gonna get a very good counter against this. I'm gonna not activate the Viking Tower and get a splash here. And that's gonna be towered down because the archers are fabulous counter against uh, um, against cemetery, but not where that uh, when they are dead. Talking too fast in English, suffering from success. Whatever, we're gonna play a poison against this bomberman because at this point we're in the unlosable position. And what is the thing that you want to do when you cannot lose? You want to simplify the position and make sure your opponent cannot complicate it for you to lose. Very simple stuff. Yet many people misunderstand it, mo mostly in the uh, different directions. So there are people that are very uh, eager to play buildings and spells all the time, which, uh, like I've said, as a general rule of thumb, are the uh, cards that kind of make the position simpler uh, while they have no advantage or when they are at the disadvantage. So when, when you're at a disadvantage in the game, you pretty much have to strive uh, to achieve uh, some kind of imbalance because well, if you play a balance game, you will lose anyway, and if you uh, fail at the risk, at least you've tried. So, th there's pretty much nothing you can lose and everything to win with this approach. That's why, if you're trying to make a comeback, you definitely should play troops and not spells. And right now, I'm gonna actually go for an attack because it looks like my opponent uh, won't be taking initiative anytime soon. I'm gonna, he's gonna be playing Bomberman right here, which I will promptly counter good stuff i would say i'm gonna just play uh, poison here and not allow any counter play uh, anytime soon so yeah that's gonna be pretty much the closing of this game i expect him yet to go for this i actually kind of misplayed this position because only one yeah only one blaster will get there but it doesn't really matter ggs nice play and yeah that, that's gonna be the game number four let's jump very quickly to the game number five and right now we are up against GOK7 with zero medals as well, probably playing a default deck. The same thing as my previous opponent, there we go. And I think uh, I didn't explain the uh, previous part as well as I uh, physically could have done, so let me just add some things. Okay, he's gonna play Mirror, very interesting pick for sure. Oh, the, the T-Rex won't be tanky. That, that's unfortunate as well. So, I was saying that uh, if you are uh, striving to get a win, you should be... Okay, uh, my opponent gave up, so uh, while I'm gonna be three-starring him, I'm gonna explain the premise of uh, how to basically win the game. So, uh, when you are uh, striving to get an advantage, you should be playing troops because 
uh, troops basically uh, get uh, get you value uh, as long as they're alive. So if you can tr uh, keep your troops alive, you will basically get a value uh, for uh, every second they're alive. Uh, what are buildings and spells do? So buildings basically uh, kind of only defend. Uh, there are only two buildings in the game that can attack uh, and those are siege buildings. They are kind of treated more uh, as a win condition and uh, spells get you value instantly. So uh, while they're gone, they're gone. They won't be getting you uh, any more value. And with troops, basically if you put them, for instance, like uh, take the T-Rex, if you play the T-Rex, you can, for instance, counter apes with T-Rex, then play a brute in front of it, and then uh, the T-Rex will pre prevent the brute from being taken down by, for instance, skeletons or footmen, and the T-Rex still will be alive and giving you the real value. So uh, that's why, for instance, like playing T-Rex against apes will be better in this case uh, than playing uh, Bomb Tower, because, yeah, you will take some damage, but at the same time, you will counter push, and uh, this counter push will be just worth more, probably. Also, you will get the damage back, so th that's just the better play, and that's the philosophy I follow while playing the game. And yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna end the video right here, right now. Definitely thank you for watching till the end, if you were... Uh, having the patience to hear my rant about how to play a boom arena well so yeah thanks for watching if you aren't uh, already make sure to subscribe my youtube channel because i post the content every single day as well as shorts and uh, if you haven't checked them uh, please do so i gladly appreciate that and yeah thanks for watching make sure to subscribe i'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of boom arena